Next question is from Pride Movement Fitness. Why did you guys partner up versus going solo? How did you balance the ego of I'm bringing this much to the business, but they're only bringing this much? So <laughs> that that last yeah. sentence right there is the the death nail in any successful group, whether you look at music or business. That whole attitude of uh, almost six years, and that's never been said in this business. Never, and yeah. you know what? And I'll tell you what: there are definitely moments when, in, in times, in what we do, where where one person's doing a lot more than the other, or bringing more value. Mm -hmm. Nobody says it. Nobody. If anything, I'll acknowledge the other person is. I, I I'll never try to do that for myself because I know that that's the death nail for any successful team. You know what? It's really this. It's. It's realizing that however good and awesome you are, you're not the best at everything. Mm -hmm. So surrounding yourself with people who are better than you at other things. I, when I was younger, that was a hard thing for me to, to see because I f it felt like a weakness in myself. Like, oh, that person's better than me at this. And, you know, it was like a hard ego check. As I got older, I loved it. Now I'm like, oh, that person's better than me at this. I'm so glad I'm working with them mm -hmm. so that that person can bring that thing <clears throat> to the table. There's no way that uh, for, I, I'm just speaking for myself. There's no way that I, that I would be able to do anywhere near what we're able to do without working with the team that I work with because they bring things to the table that I either can't or don't want to. Um, and that's just the reality. It's a fact of life. Yeah. It's humbling. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that um, you look at strengths and you look at uh, your own strengths, your own weaknesses, but uh, obviously if you can see around you and you see greatness, like you want to associate yourself with, with people around you that, you know, will elevate you. And so to be able to uh, maintain that is definitely tricky. Uh, and it's something that uh, you want to always think that you're doing your best and putting your best foot forward. And again, like it, it moves around, it moves around with people's strengths. And so you have to be able to kind of feed uh, them in any way possible that you can. And it, it's definitely one of those things that's, it's an ego thing that you got to check on yourself and, and know, uh, you know, that uh, we're all putting in effort. We all want to win. And this all comes from being part of a team and thinking of it more of a team instead of a, an individual. And this is, I was just grateful that I grew up uh, in all the sports uh, that I played mm -hmm. because it really taught me a lot of those lessons with, with, you know, great players and, and, and great coaches and people that, uh, had roles that, that they were they were killing and I know I could lean on them for certain roles that they were going to fulfill uh, and, and when there wasn't that how shitty we were as a collective unit and so it's it's allowing it's allowing them to shine it's allowing each person to shine in in, in their strengths and to just pass the ball you know pass the ball shoot when be ready to shoot but you got to pass the ball I, I think that there's uh, you know there was either a lot of luck or serendipity or god whichever one of the three that you know fits your narrative better it was ayahuasca yeah or, the, yeah. <laughs> or well, that. Right. i think that i think that played a big role and the reason why i say that is that it to get four uh alpha men in the room that are all very confident individually and have had success on their own to think that we're all just going to fall in suit together maybe was even a little bit of uh, uh, us being naive um, but worked out. It really did. And I think part of why it worked out is uh, somewhat where we were in our life. You know, everybody's in their late 30s, uh, some older. You have uh, myself, I had already partnered with Justin. So Justin and I had a relationship that goes back um, well before Mind Pump. And so we'd work together. So I knew that his skill sets complemented mine really well. Uh, we were very different, um, but we also had that sport background that he's alluding to where you know winning is more important than either of us individually. We, we already had that. We'd already been to war together in business. So I already felt confident with that. I feel like Sal and Doug had a very similar relationship. They, you know, they first had built a relationship as client and trainer. And many times when you meet someone very unique and special like that, you build a bond and a relationship. They had built that already. They were already starting to do business together. So they had this mutual respect. And also I think Sal and Doug saw that in each other. The same thing that Justin and I saw, they complimented each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses. And so they had built that and forged. And then the fact that when we all got together, it really was just like, you know, there's a lot of, even though we're all very different, there's a lot of Sal and I have a lot of similarities. And I think uh, Doug and Justin have a lot of similarities. It, and it's like, 
but yet different enough that Justin compl- comp, uh, compliments even more of Doug and Sal compliments even more of me or however you want to look at it. And so then the four of us joining together made this perfect marriage for a business. And I think it also mattered that we all wanted to build something really big. Like none of us were in it for like a dollar amount. Like, oh, I want to make this much money and I'll be happy because it, it, we could have done something similar, even though n- nothing like Mind Pump would have ever happen. But we all could have been very successful building some sort of a social platform, doing digital programs, selling it online, creating a presence for yourself and all had individual successful business. But there's no way we would have been able to scale to where we are now and where we're going uh, without all of us together. And I think everybody kind of wanted that going in. Everybody wanted to build something really special and big. We wanted yeah. to change things. Yeah. And so, and because we all had this, this crazy vision, um, it worked. And all of us, none of, no one wanted to be the man. Like nobody cared. And like, I knew that's when I knew we were going to be really successful early, very early on when no one wanted the limelight. No one said they wanted to be this leader person or like I'm the one who's in charge, then you follow me or, you know, wanting to be on all in the programs or wanting to be on the YouTube channel or wanting to be the face of the brand. Like nobody wanted any of that. Like everybody was like, nah, I don't want it. Like let's, let's give it to somebody else or let's promote somebody else or let's put somebody else out there. And when you have four people like that want to win that bad and are that selfless going into it and then that much experience, I mean, you get something like this. So I think it's very special. And I don't know if I could have done, figured out, you know, three other people that I could have done this with. And so, you know, I don't know, call it luck, call it serendipity, call it whatever you want to call it. Um, but there's definitely a lot of that. And I don't, I don't see a lot of, you know, four partnerships getting together to build a business uh, and working that off. No, I, I would yeah. say that the first step is finding the right people to work with. Um, but the next step, because let's say you do that, which is hard, by the way. I mean, finding the right people to work with and partner with, that's a tough, uh, that's a tough obstacle to overcome. But once you do then that means you're going to be successful, right? Oh, I got the right people. We're all working together. We're all going to crush. Now comes the bigger obstacle. That's the egos. The egos kick in. You see this again in, in music, in business, in sports. You get the right people working together. Then they start to do well, and then the real challenge kicks in. Now it's one of one person feeling like they're the one they're the, the, you know, that's doing everything, or they're the, the star of the show, and it destroys – uh, amazing things. And so, uh, you know, we, we did that first part. We, we found each other, worked together. Second part, uh, I think we're doing pretty good too, is, uh, is, is checking those egos. But it's a constant thing. It's a constant thing. And it's really showing the other people that you value them rather than showing them how valu- valuable you are. I, I think that's uh, kind of a better way to put it. Well, yeah. to that point, we, I mean, with, as the business grew, right? So we made like no money the first year, second year started to make a little bit of money. Third year is when it really started to turn and crank. You know, there's, there was a, a an, that, and that was the first time this, what you're saying right now, I think was really challenged. And I, I, I don't feel like it was a challenging decision. It was a very quick, easy decision for all this. Cause I think our heads were already there, which is, you know, it would have been very easy to, to line our own pockets as the business started to scale early on, but we reinvested in people. You know, we knew that this again was much greater and bigger than us. And that if we were going to build this thing, that's going to be around for a very long time and it's going to supply jobs for many people and, and do these great things that it, it can't just be about us. And even, and that's a very tempting moment probably. And I, I, I if I was 25 and in that same position and I saw the, uh, the amount of money that was coming in the account and knowing that quarter that is mine, if I want it, like That's that would Bentley right there, yeah, right? That would, that would have been a very challenging situation to be in, in my early twenties where we're all at, like there was no doubt. I mean, we were very, very cautious with that. And then when we got to, got to a point where we felt comfortable that we can invest it instead of investing it in ourselves and paying ourselves more money, we said, let's go out and find other people that we can build this thing with that we think that will add value to this team. And so, and we've continued to do that. And so, you know, you, you don't see us like a lot of these uh, Instagram influencers, you know, driving around the Bentley and doing shit like that. That's flashy. And look at me because, you know, it was never about us. It was always about building something that was greater than us. And I think that that was never a conversation. Not, not one of us you know, spoke up and said, hey, I would like to take a bigger salary or, hey, I'd like some more of my money. Everybody was always they about, know, right? you know, putting it back into the business and then into people. And it's never been different. I'm going to take my Lambo back. <laughs> <laughs>